page 695. Page 695, meet me there. Page 695, standing as we say. set our hearts, our minds, uh, even in these moments, to seek you in the service tonight. May you be uh, pleased with our desire to hear from you. Lord, we pray that each of us would know that we have uh, work in our midst. We pray, Father, as always, if any among us don't know you, that they would know their need for Christ and receive you this evening. May each of us who do be growing by your grace. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated.
take the name of Jesus with you. Page 705, standing as we sing. Because also this evening, if some of you ladies are interested in helping with uh, the mail out for the ladies conference, it's time to mail out the ladies conference information. So if anyone would like to help uh, stuff envelopes tonight, please meet outside Kelly's office after the service for more instruction. So I know that seems like it's a long way off, but it'll be here quickly. So we need to get those things in the mail. And so if you want to help with that after the service tonight, you, you are uh, encouraged to do so. Also, if you are a camp counselor and uh, we've not touched base yet uh, in the last three or four days, I need, we need to touch base with you after the service. Maybe we can meet back uh, at my office after the service tonight. Go over just a couple things so we're, we're uh, in good order for tomorrow morning. And then uh, remember, of course, next Sunday will be Father's Day and we'll be honoring uh, all dads that are here with us. And so I uh, look forward to that uh, next, next Sunday. Of course, we're at camp this week, but church still goes, and uh, my dad and Pastor Meredith will be preaching uh, Wednesday night, so I hope that uh, those of you that aren't going to camp will not only be in prayer for us, but you'll be faithful uh, to be in your spot uh, this Wednesday evening. All right, ushers, we'll have you come. It's exciting. we got two ushers in every aisle here. I'm wondering if one of them's going to be the hammer, you know, inspecting. Uh, no, maybe not. They're just trailing. Being respectful. I want to be a disruption and look what I did. There you go. Right. So, Dustin, will you ask the Lord's blessing on the offering? Yes, sir. Dear Lord, thank you that we could come to your house tonight and worship you. Lord, please help us to give what you have us to give and to give with a willing spirit. Please bless the camp week. Help it speak to our hearts and please help us to be safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
searching for the child in need of faith, for the homeless and forsaken, for the hungry and the cold, for the prisoner. church and I'm so thankful for the, uh, the wedding what a blessing uh, it was to be able to be here and, and to see these two young people that uh, love the Lord uh, get married and just a blessing to be with God's family uh, enjoy enjoy the way it's supposed to be uh, now we need to pray for them uh, that it's the way it's supposed to be <laughs> pastor said it well this morning. They're going to find out that uh, she's going to find out he isn't perfect. And he's going to find out that she isn't perfect. Uh, but if you turn to a perfect God, everything comes out right. Amen. Uh, God's, God's good to us. I was in the bag tonight and Jonathan was telling jokes. <coughs> Roland, you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> jokes around here are, are, are so corny they just you know, but uh, we enjoy laughing so they work uh, what a blessing Genesis uh, chapter number 12 if you're able tonight if you'd stand with me in honor of the word of God we're going to begin tonight in verse number 4 and read through verse number 9 so Abraham or Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him by the way it's always good to do what God tells you to do some people seem they, they have no idea what God tells them to do and 
if you look in the Word of God and you'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, He will show you what He wants you to do. Now, it's not always crystal, crystal clear, uh, but He'll show you what He wants, to do, wants you to do. And tonight, we're going to look at principles to live by. But uh, Abraham uh, departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram uh, was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth out into the land of Canaan, into a land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land under the place, uh, unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Morah, uh, and the Canaanite was in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, Thy seed, uh, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there buildeth he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto, the, unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, uh, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and uh, Hai on the east, and there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Father in heaven, we pray you'd speak to our hearts tonight through the word of God. And not just the, the verbiage of a man, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, you know the needs of every heart, every person in this room. And... <coughs> We know that you love us beyond comparison and more depth than we could ever understand. And so we pray in your mercy and your grace that you meet the needs of every life, every heart. May you impart to us uh, that life that comes from heaven. As we hear the word of God, may our faith be strengthened for someone here without Christ. May they be convicted of their sin brought to salvation tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to talk to you about Abraham and his, and his pilgrimage. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 13, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. The word pilgrim, according to Webster, 1828, one who has only a temporary residence on earth. And that's God's people. We recognize and realize that we are we're here, our life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away, except for the life that we receive of Christ that never perishes. This life is is uh, is temporary. Abraham will begin here in, in, the, in these, these verses we've read tonight. He will begin his pilgrimage with God, and he will, he will set uh, the course to some degree of his life, some principles that he's, going to, uh, that he's going to apply to himself, some things he's going to do his whole life by faith. Now, he's going to have some ups and downs. He's going to make some poor decisions. There's some times he isn't going to trust God like he should. Does that sound familiar? That's, he was a man. And, uh, he, 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 would, he would have some ups and downs. But here he's setting a pattern uh, that, that we'll see him come back to. And, uh, and it's good for us uh, to have principles in our life that we go by. This is, this, this is what I'm going to do. Paul said, this one thing I do. This is what I'm going to do. If this happens, it makes no difference. This is how I'm going to live my life. These are the judgments, as Proverbs would say, or the way I make decisions. Uh, there's some things I'm not going to do. There's some things I am going to do uh, because I trust God. And you and I ought to be that way. We ought to be trusted to be faithful before God that we're, we're, going, to, we're going to do some things uh, that please the Lord. And here Abraham, uh, we, we can see in his life some decisions that he made. And the first one I want you to notice is in verse number five. 
Let me read that again. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. In obedience to God, Abraham, by faith, took everything that he had and went to the place that God directed him to go. Abraham was a wealthy man. Let me say that again. Abraham was a wealthy man. Uh, in the commentaries, several of them, they call him a wealthy rancher. I don't think of, of people who keep sheep as ranchers, but, but that's what they are. Uh, and I think he had sheep and cattle and camels and, and the, the, the whole shooting match or the whole ball of wax, however you want to put it. Matter of fact, look, look over to chapter 13 and verse number 2. The Bible says, uh, And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. He was very rich. By the way, he was rich when he left. You say, well, why, preacher, is that significant? Because it shows us something about this man. Uh, in in uh, Let me read it for you. I, it's familiar to you. I think the pastor read it here a couple weeks ago. But in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, the Bible says in, in verse number 8, it says, In having food and raiment, let us there would be content. But they that would be rich fall into temptation and snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. That's an interesting statement. By the way, money's not evil. Abraham being wealthy wasn't evil. But if you, if you set your affection on wealth, you'll destroy your life. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Well, it's because I'm just so smart. <laughs> I know it because the Word of God says it. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some having coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Uh, wealth can't make you happy. Let me say that again because, because we, we are living in a, a world of illusions today. Uh, television illusions and computer illusions where, uh, where this is, this is going to make you happy, this is going to... And uh, these, these movie stars are so happy. Are they? Are these, are these multi-billionaires happy? I think not. You say, why, why can you judge them? Why can, because the only, the only one that can really bring you peace and joy in your heart is God. Amen. You say, couldn't they know the Lord? A few of them do, and I'm grateful for that. For the most part, they don't know anything about God because they think, that money is the thing, the only thing, that's the goal of life. But when they get there, it's an empty goal. Uh, money can't bring happiness, it can't bring joy, it can't, it can't bring peace, uh, and it certainly can't bring heaven. But we see with Abraham here, we see something about him that he didn't love as well. Well, how do we know that? Because he risked, he risked himself, he risked his wealth obeying God. He already had it. He risked his wealth obeying God. We see of, we see of Moses also. You remember Moses uh, chose, uh, rather than be called the son of, uh, of Pharaoh's daughter, that he chose, he chose not the pleasures of sin for a season, but he rejected that and he chose Christ. He had, he had all the riches of Egypt at his feet. Chose to be a shepherd on the backside of the desert rather than the things of this world. So Abraham's a wealthy man, and wealth can be a problem. You remember the rich young man in Matthew chapter 19? You remember he said, uh, What shall I do? Uh, basically, I'll put it in my words that, that, that I, I have eternal life, that I go to heaven. What, what more do I do? I keep the commandments. I do this, I do that, and I do that. And Jesus knew what looked into his heart and said one thing. Take all you've got. Give it to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven. 
You say, does that mean everyone ought to take all they've got and give it away and they'll have treasure in heaven? No, he wouldn't talk to everybody, but that person had a problem. His problem was his wealth was standing between him and God. And he loved money. How do you know that? Because it's in the text. Because uh, he thought Christ asked an impossible thing. So we find Abraham, or Abram, even here, we find him uh, willing to live, uh, and I'm going to call it the Christian life, the sacrificial life. He was willing to risk everything he had on the Word of God. So oh, that's right, missionaries ought to do that. Especially Ron Todd. I'm for it. We'll both. Ron ought to do that. Now, just look me right in the eye. You ought to do that. And I ought to do that. Well, why are you saying that, preacher? You see, we all want God's blessing. We all want God's hand upon our life. We know that he is life. We know he's the author of life. But we want our own personal security. Can you be any more secure than in the hand of God? Are you listening? Well, I just want some clout in this world. You can't do any better than walking with God. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus said in Luke chapter 14 and verse 33, whosoever he be, I think he's talking to everybody, don't you? Whosoever he be, I think that's all of us. Amen? Yeah. That's kind of generic, amen. Okay, there's a couple more. It's all of us. It's everyone. Whosoever he be of you. He's Okay, he, he already hit us all, and now he's saying, you, for me. So it's everybody. It's all of us. Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Say, again, that's for pastors. That's for missionaries. That's not for us. That's a lie. That's for everyone who names the name of Christ. You say, well, God wants to take everything I, I have. No, God wants to give you everything you need. That's the faith life. That's, do you see what Abraham did? He risked everything he had on the word of God. That's all God asked of us. Well, I, I don't want any risk. I want security. It comes from God. He'll take care of you. He's promised to take care of you. Obey him. Do what he says. Are you all in? Amen. Well, not tonight. <laughs> Got a baseball game. Are you kidding me? Uh, well, are you are you all in? Are you all in the message tonight? What would be all in the message? That'd be you pray and ask God to speak to your heart. That'd be your listening. That'd be your listening for the Lord to speak to your heart. You're listening to God of heaven to say something to you so you can respond. You know why God doesn't talk to some people? This is really deep, I know. I know some people haven't heard from the Lord in years. You know why? They're not listening. So well, God stopped talking to me. It's because you stopped listening. You, don't, you, have, you only want to listen to what you want to listen to. If you'll listen to what God says, it, and you'll be sensitive to the, to the Holy Spirit, he will speak to you. He'll speak to you when you're in a grocery store. And he's not going to use these words, but he'll say witness to that person. And, and if you do, you look, you don't have to preach to him. But you can be a testimony. You can be a witness. You can have somebody to track. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, he'll lead you. Uh, I think the pastor mentioned Wednesday night we were in the, uh, we, we stopped at, it was like a truck stop place and it had a Wendy's in it. And my wife said, oh, I got a Wendy's gift card. So, so we went in there, and, and there was this there was this fellow in there. I believe he's a truck driver because we saw him walk into his truck. And, 
and uh, he's a black guy, and man, he was he was preaching. Oh, he's standing there, and 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 my my wife and I had already, or I had ordered, and my wife was standing beside me. He said, "I don't want to get in front of you, folks." He said, "I don't want." To. He said, "I'm I'm just here loving Jesus. I'm just here loving the Lord. I'm just here talking about God. I'm He's the answer to everybody's needs." You say, "Well, uh, the preacher, that guy sounds like a nut." Maybe he was. I wanted to be a little more nutty. We, 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 need to, we need to be all in for God. Let me, say, let me ask you again, are you? Yeah. Are you all in? Well, you don't understand, preacher. I'm, I'm too young. I'm glad David didn't say that when the giant came out. You weren't too young. How old is Abraham here? 75. There's only a couple people in here that, you know, I'm, I'm not 75 yet. Not for you old folks. <laughs> uh, I'll be 70. It won't be long. God, God, God doesn't go by age. You listen to his voice. He'll use you no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, and everything in between. Are you all in for God? Are you willing? Listen. Listen, are you willing? I, I'm not trying to get what you have. I'm trying to see that everything you had, God's, God's given to you. And are you all into the place where if God said, I want you to do this, you do it? Amen. You say, well, that'd be, that'd be too risky. I'm pretty settled. No. Whatever God would lead you to do will be the greatest thing in your life because he's, he's great God. No one loves you more than him. No one can do more for you than he can. Trust him. Trust him. That's what Abraham did. Yeah, well, that's right. That was Abraham, not me. No, we all can trust God. Amen. Trust him. Secondly, verse number six. First, first of all, Abraham's wealth, or Abram's wealth. Once you know it's verse number six, chapter 12. And Abram passed through the land into the place of Shechem, uh, under the plain of Morah, uh, and the Canaanite was in the land. <clears throat> Where did God lead Abraham? I'll give you a hint. My first point was a W. Into a wicked place. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Bible says here in verse 6, the Canaanite was there. Unger's Bible Dictionary says, Hebrews were continually in peril and uh, the peril of contamination from the lewd nature of worship, of the, the immoral gods, of Canaanite, prostitute goddesses and serpents, etc. Why would God call his surrendered servant who risked his life, risked his health, risked his family, risked his fortune on God. Why would God call him out of a place of idolatry in, to go to a place of idolatry? You know I've got the answer. Or I think I do. The preacher, that doesn't make sense. You know, when you get saved, there's a when you first get saved. When I, when I, you, you all know my story, but when I first got saved, there was a wake up call. I thought everybody in the world want Christ. I just and and what does God call us to do? He calls us to go to sinners and bring salvation. And here, uh, Abraham was called out of a place of idolatry. He was called from his kinfolk, people that spoke his language. He was called into a dangerous place, uh, and he endangered his wealth, but he also, he also was in a place, uh, not only did he not speak the language, but it was a wicked place. Why is that? Because we are to be separated unto God but not isolated from this world. 
lot of people think if you know we just taught about Noah if I could just just have my little family over here and we'd have our little church over here and just let the world leave us alone that's not what we're here for God has called us into this world to be salt and light How you doing? Are you all in? Are you still all in? This world's a wicked place. Well, if we just had revival, I'm with you. I want revival. But, but revival starts here. Yeah. Not out there. That's our mission field. Our separation is not isolation. It's insulation. God is between us and this present world. Let me read for you in John 17 what the Lord Jesus said in his high priestly prayer. And he's praying for us, by the way. You realize this, this prayer is personal. It's not only for the disciples. He included you if you're a Christian. The Lord Jesus Christ included you in this prayer. You personally. That's right, Cole. That's right. You're in this prayer. If you're saved, you're in this prayer. <laughs> And so is your dad. And so is your mom. And you'll have to tell me whether your brother's are true. <laughs> but listen to what the Lord says here in John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word. What a wonderful possession. Jesus said, I've given them thy word. And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. What a tremendous passage of Scripture. Christ is praying for us. Verse 16. They are not of the world, when you get saved, you're no longer of this world. You're of Christ. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Do you notice Christ is, we're not only in the family of God, we're, like, we're to be like Christ in this world. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We, we, we started at the word of God. I've given them thy word, and we end up here in verse 17. Or I'm going to end up at the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. In other words, set them apart. Make them different in this world by the word of God. What did Abraham obey here in chapter 12? What did he say? The Lord said unto Abraham, go do this. And the Bible says there, and as we read in the first verse, and Abraham did what God said. What is that? He's doing what the word of God told him to do. And he's doing it by faith. He takes everything he's got and everyone he has, everyone he's responsible for. He takes all his cattle and all his sheep and, and all his camels and all his gold and all his silver and all his servants and his wife and his and. The, he, he shouldn't have taken Lot with him, but well, that's another story. Uh, but he takes his brother's son, Lot, and they head on this journey of obeying God. What a wonderful journey. What a wonderful journey. Uh, it, it, what an amazing journey. Who could have, to, who could have thought uh, that when God saves you, he, 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 he leads you? And, and what a privilege to know uh, the people that we know and have known. Every once in a while, I'll get a text from, or an email from Ron Todd. Brother so-and-so that we went to school with passed away. What a privilege to know those people. But they're in heaven. They're in a different place. Uh, missionaries and pastors and uh, my pastor and uh, they're in heaven, my pastor's wife. Wonderful people. I got to know them. I can spend time with them. I can, I can still see my pastor's wife in my mind's eye. I see her in a special way. We went there for a watch night service. The next morning we're setting up breakfast. 
the table. The table is about the table is about. Uh, it's one of those big tables, about like the one we have at this house. Her family's there, Pastor Bullock, Mrs. Bullock, my wife, uh, several of my children gathered around the table. She made a southern breakfast. And so what do you have for southern breakfast, Graham? Biscuits. Biscuits and gravy. Scrambled eggs. Bacon. Woo! We're eating high and hard. That's what it means. It's good. I mean, you got to smoke that bacon, but boy, it is good. I mean, bacon, bacon, bacon. You should say amen, Brian. I know you love that stuff. Amen? I knew, I knew you had one in you. So I'm sitting there at the table, and I said, pass the biscuits. And Mrs. Bullock, she was, I mean, she didn't waste any time. You say, well, she took the biscuits and picked them up and handed them. No. She took the biscuit. I was on the other end of the table and chucked it to me. <laughs> it's a good thing I was on my toes and they were soft biscuits. I'd have had a black eye. <laughs> That's our, the people that, that, what a treasured life. What a wonderful life God's given to us. Well, what did you do, preacher? Obey the word of God. God has that for each person in this room. Each one of us. Of this couple that was just married. Glory to God, they can have a wonderful life. You say, well, it'll be out hiccups and problems. No, they're still sin in the world and they're still sinners. But they can have a wonderful life because of the Word of God, because of the Spirit of God, because of the Church of God, because of God's people. God cares about us. We can trust Him. Amen. Say, but I didn't think it'd be like that. I thought, uh, I thought if I followed God that everything could just be easy. Well, He carries you. He'll carry you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is it? Because he's carrying the load. You just have to sign up and let him. Amen. Amen. Are you all in to your mission in this wicked world? Lastly, tonight, verses 7 and 8 of our chapter 12. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, Thy seed will I, uh, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed uh, from thence uh, unto the mountain of the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, uh, having Bethel on the, east, on the west and Ai on the east. And there built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Abraham's worship. You know, we saw as we, we come through the book of Genesis, we, we have the privilege of seeing through God's eyes in Moses' pen. We have the privilege of seeing Cain and Abel. We know that Abel's offering pleased the Lord. He brought an offering to God. And we talked about that he knew the difference. His parents obviously taught him what would please the Lord. And Cain brought an offering that was, uh, I think it was probably impressive, but it didn't please God. I think it was impressive manwardly. It didn't please God. Then we saw Noah. Noah gets off the ark, standing on solid ground again. Everyone's gone but him and his family. First thing he does, he worships God. Builds an altar to the Lord. He worships God. And now we see Abraham. As he begins his journey, what does he do? He worships at Bethel. By the way, this is a special place for Abraham and his family. For Abraham will return to it. Jacob, as a matter of fact, We'll, we'll skip ahead just to chapter thir 13. Uh, after Abraham makes a poor decision, he gets right with God. In chapter 13 and verse th 3, it says, And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai. You know, sometimes, sometimes you need to go back to where you started and start over. That's called rededication. Hello. Yeah. All of us at 
time deed rededication to the Lord. We get our own ideas. Say, well, well I, w I didn't have bad intentions. Neither did Abram. But he got away from the Lord. He rededicates his life here. You remember Jacob. <clears throat> Matter of fact, since we're in Genesis, flip ahead to uh, chapter 28. In verses 19 and 20. And he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Lutz at the first. And Jacob bowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, I will keep and will keep me in the way uh, that I go. I will and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so shall I come again to my father's house in peace. Uh, then shall the Lord be my God, uh, be my God. And this stone which I set as the pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou give me, I shall surely give thee a tenth. And now skip ahead to chapter 31 and verse 13. Everybody still with me? Mm -hmm. Chapter 31, verse 13. <clears throat> God speaking to, to Jacob. Verse 13. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, where thou bowest to bow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land and return to the land of thy kindred. What is Bethel? Well, the word means house of God. <coughs> house of God. <clears throat> of course, these Old Testament saints, they, they didn't understand about the church. Uh, but, but the Bible says in the New Testament that the church is the pillar and ground of truth, the house of God. The church. It's not this. By the way, I, I enjoy this. I like the air conditioning. I like the heat in the winter. Uh, I like to be comfortable. I like these chairs we have. They're a lot more comfortable than the pews, all that. I, I like all this stuff. But we're the church. And, and let me say this, and I don't mean this to put anyone else what they're doing down, but this isn't a club. Amen. Right. You know, a lot of people look at having their own say and doing their own thing, and I'm a member here and we're going to... Uh, why don't you get right with God? This place belongs to God. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's not the pastor's. We need to seek his face and do what he says. The house of God. And God has ordained the, the, uh, the New Testament church. I'm so thankful for that. 1 Timothy 3.15. You don't need to turn there. That's what I just quoted from. So we see here uh, Abram. Uh, would not only worship the Lord, and, and I don't know what he had in mind by what he did, but his worship was different than anyone else's in the land. It wasn't idolatrous. It, it wasn't uh, uh, something that would be morally questionable. Uh, his, his worship recognized uh, God Almighty in the way that God Almighty wanted to be recognized. Well, how do you know that? Because God called attention to his worship. That, by the way, that's the way we need to worship. We need to find out how God wants to be worshipped. Not the way man wants to worship God. Let me say that again. We need to discern how God desires to be worshipped, not the way we want to worship God. Uh, you ever hear someone, and I've heard people say this, well, I gave my money at that church and, and, and uh, they need to do this. If you give your money, you don't understand everything belongs to God. Keep your money. You say, well, you don't want us to give? No, I think you need to honor the Lord with your substance. And I believe God will bless you if you do. But if, if you honor the Lord with your substance and God doesn't bless you, he's got other ways of blessing you than, than, uh, than fill in your bank account. Uh, he can take care of you. Uh, I believe we need, to, we need to find out what worship, what worship means. Uh, his worship was distinctly different than anyone in that country because it recognized the living God. It recognized the God he believed in. Distinctly different. Our worship must be spiritual. John chapter 4, <clears throat> let me read it for you. John chapter 4, verse 23. But 
the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. In other words, God cares about how we worship him. Is everybody here? You're looking at me like a calf at a new gate. <laughs> By the way, I had calves, and I know what they do when they saw a new gate. They ran right into it. I put fence all around, and those calves, I let them out in the spring, and they went 90 miles an hour and ran right into the fence. You say, weren't they any smarter than that? I had dumb calves. <laughs> but you don't need to look at me like that. The hour, let me start all over. But the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers, that's what I want to be, amen? amen. True worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and and in truth. But what does that mean? I think practically it means this. It means we're listening for God to speak to us by the present Holy Spirit through the Word of God. And we're eager to please Him. I think Abraham pleased God by his worship. The attitude of his heart and what he did. Just like Abel. Abel brought the firstling of his flock. I believe, I believe he brought a lamb, the best, the best of his flock, and gave it to God. Shed his blood and illustrated Jesus Christ. God desires that we worship him in spirit and truth. You say, well, preacher, what's the difference? There's a lot of things today that are being put, put forth as worship, and, and they're nothing but a show. We don't need smoke and mirrors to worship God. Amen. We need a heart with a desire to please Him. Is that your heart tonight? Are you all in? Are you, are you really all in? Is that your heart? Oh, what a treasure to walk with God in this old world. That's what He's called us to do. Our worship should truly exalt holy God, not our fleshly desires. Religions try to do, a lot of religions try to do what they think God would be pleased with. We need to do what we know God is pleased with. From his word. He's, he's, he's outlined worship for us in the Bible. Let me ask you these things and I'll be through. The faith life, our pilgrimage with God, our walk with God in this life, Ask yourself, am I all in? Is everything that I have, my health, my wealth, everything, are you all in? That, that doesn't mean God says, I want it. That means you're willing. Are you all in? Am I separated to Christ, not isolated? From my mission. You know, that's easy to say. It is, but it's so important. If you don't reach them, no one will. You work with people, people that no one else, no one else can reach but you. You've heard all my stories. I, I, I won't, won't belittle them, but I, I know people that God put me in their path, and I really believe I was the only one in the face of the earth that could have reached them. For I talk to all mechanics, one of the Christ. You say, well, you're just a soul winner. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. But God used me in a certain place at a certain time to win someone to the Lord. You can. You can win. I'm looking, looking at some of you old people like me. You can win your physical therapist to the Lord. At least you can encourage them if they're already saved to walk with God. Amen. You can talk to your doctor about you can do it. It's your mission field. It's my mission field. What a wonderful thing to see someone you witness to come to Christ. What a treat.
treasure in this land. How's your worship? Well, preacher, I came to church. That's not what I asked you. Why'd you come? Well, because I'm supposed to. Well, I hope, I hope at the end of the service then it's more than because I'm supposed to. I hope at least a little bit in, in your heart of hearts there's a little spark of life. You realize the treasure we have in Christ. He's everything. He's our all in all. He loves us beyond that we can we can grasp in this life. Are you all in? It's our pilgrimage. It's our walk with God in this life. Truly worship in this life. Where's your testimony? People may say, well, they're, they're a good person, but does your testimony speak of God? I, I don't like people to say you're a good person. I'd like you to say there's a Christian. Because I'm not a good person. I serve a good God. You say, well, you're not a good person. No, ask my wife. She told me the other day. You know what she told me the other day? I'm going to tell you. You ready? She said, you know, sometimes you can be selfish. <laughs> Preacher, she really said that to you? <laughs> she was right. I'm going to tell you something about you. You can too. But God loves me. Jesus Christ died for me. And if I'll walk with him, he'll use me in this life. And as God uses you, you'll find it's a treasure to be used to the Lord. It may be being used to the Lord for one of your children and grandchildren. Maybe with your wife or your husband. Maybe with your neighbor, someone you work with. To walk through this life with that's what Abraham was doing. And he teaches us, he teaches us to put our all in. Uh -oh. He teaches us to be in the world, but separate from the world. He teaches us to worship God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for the word of God tonight in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Lord, help us, teach us as a church, family, how to worship you every time we meet. Use the pastors here. Use the word of God. And teach us how to worship you. Help us, Lord, to be all in. You're so worthy. It's so sad when we when we truly are selfish. We're absorbed in ourselves. Lord, help us to be all in for you. Bless the word of God tonight. If there's some here about Christ may be saved, may all of us give our all to thee. I pray in Jesus' name. Let's all stand together.